Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Keeping your hydrangeas happy during times of oppressive summer heat can be a challenge. In our first segment, we'll give you care tips to keep your hydrangeas in tip-top shape. In our second segment, we're going to discuss one of the largest flowers you can grow in the garden. With flowers approaching 12 inches across, the hardy hibiscus is a showstopper in a landscape or garden. Do you have falling leaves? Are your evergreens turning inside yellow? We'll tell you what's normal and what's not during our third segment. Jim, a listener from Mount Arlington called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and has questions about tomatoes. Listen to his call during our fourth segment. What's bugging you? That scab on the end of your (laughs) tomato is bugging both of us, not to mention that lesion on your pepper. We'll diagnose all of these problems and cure spotted blossom end rot in our final segment. (laughs) So stay tuned and be back. We'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle. That will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center... Ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, everybody, to Bloomers in the Garden. Mop-type hydrangeas, a.k.a. macrophylla and smooth hydrangeas, are in full bloom right now. As As the flower heads mature, they may sag a little bit. This is a common thing occurring right now, and especially in new plants. That's right. Um, Had crazy weather. It was the season started off really wet. We had lots of rain. Everything looked great. It was cool. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we had that stretch of like three weeks, almost drought conditions. Yeah. And if your high drainages weren't (laughs) drooping, then uh, you you need to supplement them during those types of times. And and that lately, we've been in this almost. 
it, every day has almost been the same where it's been threat of rain at some point. And sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. And that with the heat being up in the 90s this week anyway, that you want to make sure you're supplementing with water. If they begin to to basically flag, and that means to they start looking like they're wilting, mm-hmm. you need to supplement them with water. If it's the flowers, Julio, mm-hmm. what do you need to do? You need to cut them back. That's right. Especially when they're sagging. <laughs> Everybody out. Yeah. When should I cut back my hydrangeas? When should I cut back my hydrangeas? Guess what? Mm. It's time to cut back your hydrangeas. Right now. And right now we're specifically talking about macrophyllas and the smooth hydrangeas, which are those mop head ones, the ones that are pink and the ones that are blue. Cut them back now because if you have reblooming types, they will rebloom on their new wood. I'm going to ask you to explain new wood and old wood, Julio. Yeah, new wood is going to be the one that uh, is going to be in that, in that uh, years, uh, the, the, blo- the blossoms are coming out that year. So, um, and then the old wood is previous year. Right. So, and you're saying blossoms, but you need new growth. New growth, yeah. So, for instance, it, it, you just got a spurt of, of new growth from the spring, and that new growth is new wood. The stuff that was originally on the plant, that is the old wood. And that older varieties of hydrangeas will only bloom on their old wood. So like, I had I had guys come in, did a cleanup at my house. Oh, okay. And cut back all my all Nico your... blue hydrangeas oh. uh, in, uh, oh. in April. Oh, in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. I will not see another bloom until next year. Next year. <laughs> unless, yeah, because you will not be doing my cleanup. <laughs> anyway, uh. that uh, you need to cut back your hydrangeas, whether it's an old style or new style right now, just simply because you can finally get it under control. Like some people have hydrangeas that are 20 years old oh and they like they're six, eight feet tall, oh. eight feet wide. And they, how do I get it down? Now is the time oh, to yeah. cut it back. Cut it back and ha- cut it in half. Mm-hmm. You can cut yeah. that much. And don't be worried if it looks like all sticks, it will push out new growth because you'll get another growth cycle between now and the end of of the summer. So just relax. Just relax. What about if my blooms, I, I, I wanted a blue flower. I want it really blue like flower. that super blue. Super blue. But it's not. It's like yeah. a purpley, purpley pinkish blue. Okay. You want so bluer. What yeah. do I need to do? You want to grab, you want to go to the garden center and grab a spoma organic aluminum soil, sulfate. Acidifier is called. Yeah. And aluminum that's, sulfate. And, and, and again, that, that is, that, is what you need to do to make it blue. Mm-hmm. And that will make your pH lower. The lower the pH, the bluer it's going to be. Now, don't go nuts. You know, you don't want <laughs> It's like, all right, well, if it's really blue at si- at 6, you know, no, it'll be gonna... really blue at 1. <laughs> one. And, uh, no, you'll kill it. Because, <laughs> again, you want to just lower it so that it's more acidic yeah. You're going to fertilize it with uh, also a combination of the aluminum sulfate, but also you want to use holytone as well. They can be combined at the same time. It's, it's not going to um, interact in any negative way. But the whole thing, it's all about the pH. And aluminum sulfate is a way to lower mm-hmm. a uh, alkaline condition to make it more acidic. And, and hydrangea, blue hydrangeas, that's what they want. Mm-hmm. All right. What well, now let me ask you. Well, yeah. that when you... Uh, put that on. Uh, will how long will it take for that to? Act? It's got to water in, get down into the soil, change the pH. Then the plant has to absorb it, and then and it will start to change. change it so it may take an entire season. Mm. You know, your blooms next year will certainly be bluer, bluer. but you should apply it um, once in the spring, once in the fall, and then that will actually you know make your your hydrangea blue 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 so it may take a whole a whole season, season. depends on how fast it breaks down in your soil mm-hmm. and how fast the plant will absorb it now if you cut back if you have an ever blooming hydrangea and you've cut it back and you're waiting for the new growth and the new flower buds to start and you put down aluminum sulfate mm-hmm. you may see it this year Oh, that quick. Yeah, that quick because, again, it's got to form those new buds. They're not formed already, so right. it's working through the plant, and it's going to be absorbed through the plant. And anytime you fertilize, you would the whole goal is to get it watered in 
if you don't do it by yourself, you know, you put it down before rain and that will help it to, to water into the soil. Mm-hmm. All right. I've got the opposite thing. I don't want a blue one. I want to pick one. <laughs> So what do I do? Paint it. <laughs> uh-huh. Boom, boom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tip your waitresses. <laughs> you can add a little. Again, we have a spoma here, which we love. And uh, we got lime right here. All right, lime. And, and lime will sweeten the soil. What does that mean? Ooh, it makes it sweet as it can be. <laughs> Go no, on, oil. People are here for information. <laughs> We're gonna, it's going to raise up the pH level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it'll make it more alkaline. Alkaline. So, and that it's like litmus paper. Like if, if anybody goes back to chemistry class, if you remember doing this t- test where you take litmus paper and you dip it into a solution and when the paper turns pink, it means it's alkaline. When it turns blue, it means it's acidic. Same type of thing. You're, you have a living litmus paper in your hydrangeas. Yeah. Now, early yeah. in, the, in the season, we, in, or I'm sorry, in the segment, we mentioned smooth hydrangeas. Smooth hygienists are generally white. You're yeah. not going to, you know, there's a couple of varieties. Like, um, I believe that the Incredible, Incredible yeah. that those are um, uh, possibly smooth hydrangeas. Invi- I need to Invincible. Sure what is her name? What is it? Invincible. Invincible. Yeah, right. Right. Invincible. Yeah. The Annabelle. Or- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that those are going to stick to their color range no matter what you do to, to the soil as far as this, the um, alkaline or acidic. So you're not going to mess around with that. You're, you usually have one less thing to do. Yeah. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it's a time after they're done flowering. That is time to really cut them back hard because the plants will be that much better yeah. next year. So you're going to do it right after they bloom. And then that's going to get the benefit next year. There'll be more flowers. They won't be as floppy. Like, yep. Yep. like I, I know that I've seen hydrangeas where all of a sudden all the flowers are on the ground after a really hard rain oh, yeah. and that the weight of the flowers are so great and the stems are so weak that it doesn't support mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. When you cut things back, it makes them stronger. So yeah, it does. It, it's something to always do. That's right. Don't fear the shears. There you go. It's exactly <laughs> right. Um, late summer and fall blooming hydrangeas are the paniculata types. And that they have more of a triangular flower, generally white, where they fade to a pink. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of great foliage color on those now. Lots of, oh my gosh, that whole whole series. I mean, there, there's so many so new many ones ways. out there. Yeah, I mean, what what is your favorite? I like limelight. I'm not. I like the classic. You still like limelight? Yeah, I do. I like the new limelights that are more compact. In that, oh, you like the smaller? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It gets four by four rather than like. Six, six foot. Six foot. It gets a little big, but that's that's all right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you there's a there's a spot for every plant. Yes, there is. And that's why we still sell a yeah. ton of them. Yeah. So those don't prune back. Those are late. You're gonna go and take care of those actually in late winter, early spring. You'll let them go over the winter with their their heads where they'll go from that process of white to pink. And then they'll get like a tan color, and they'll actually be kind of pretty in the landscape. Oh, so yeah. you just leave you just leave them. You just leave them until late summer pruning, and that's what you go out there. And when you do your cleanup, you can cut up your you can cut your grasses back at that point. But again, that's going to be late winter, early spring. Mm-hmm. Anything else? No, I, I think we're pretty good on that, Len. Don't water your hydrangeas in full sun. No. Every little droplet that mm-hmm. ends up on your leaves are going to be like little tiny mic, uh, like uh, let's see, they're they're gonna they're gonna burn a hole in your leaf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, again, it, it's it's just don't water them during the hottest part of the day. Best thing to do is actually water it in early morning, mm-hmm. um, because again, you can mess up your leaves. Like if any of you that have sprinkler systems that are just have this things go on, you don't really have control. It just goes on whenever it says to go on. And you're, it's going on where it's in the hot part of the day. The again, it's like a magnifying glass. All those little droplets of water, and you're burning holes in it. You're causing like a you know you'll get that funky you know red spot on there, and that's generally from water issues. So again, water the soil, not necessarily the plant. Awesome. All right, I'm done. Yeah, you done? 
you've no. got questions about your hydrangeas, yeah. make sure you call the hotline. What's that number, Julio? 609-685-1880. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. (gasps) That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. Can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. That's Aaron. That's Sam. (laughs) And we're Bloomers in the Garden. (laughs) This time of the year, evergreen trees and all shrubs will shed out some of its old growth. Plant parents come in panicked. What's happening? (laughs) It's dying. They're sure. They're sure they did something wrong. But, you know, it's a natural occurrence most of the time. We'll have ways that in this segment you can check your plant's complexion to see whether it's a real issue or not. Have you had uh, customers come in talking yes. about shedding their, their plant oh, shedding? Oh, yes. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's my, my plant is brown. I don't know what's going on in the inside of my arborvitae. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what do you say? You say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Give him a big hug. Yeah, it's, right. like, it's all right. Uh-huh. They're going to be just fine. Uh-huh. It's, all, it's like they're like your kids. It's like uh-huh. it's all part of growing up and becoming yeah. a bigger plant. <laughs> it is. That's exactly what's going on. Uh-huh. New growth, like we talked in the first segment, we we're talking about new growth. Uh-huh. It comes over and it takes over and it starts, you know, making your plant grow. Right. And then the inside doesn't get as much sun and it, Rather than struggle for it to help, you're not no photosynthesis is taking place. So what happens is that that area just browns out, and it and it just says, you know what, we're not doing anything, we're growing. So the out sir, outward branches all get the the sun, and that's where we're going to concentrate our growth. I have a southern magnolia. It is probably forty feet tall. It's very cool. It is the, the limbs from the ground up are getting 
higher and higher because all those damn people from Bloomers come over and take the branches for Christmas. Oh, is that what they do? <laughs> anyway, that's another that's another problem. <laughs> you have to have a talk about that. Uh, pretty soon, it'll be like I won't be able to. You know, you won't have like, anything. It'll look there. like a lollipop tree. <laughs> right. Anyway, that Southern magnolias are they drop those great big leaves. Oh, yeah. Like, you can hear them hit the ground. <laughs> it's not like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that autumn feel where the leaves fall. And <laughs> No, these, these actually, you know, hit the ground. You can hear them. And it's all part of them growing. Right now, it's in full bloom and looks gorgeous. It does. Uh, it's so big now, I, and the limbs are so far up that I can't see the flowers because I'm underneath it. <laughs> so, I've got to go to the second story window to look at the tree to see a flower. Anyway, oh, <laughs> so a lot of trees just naturally do it. Uh, Even some regular deciduous trees had somebody talking about their Bradford pear. Oh, yeah. You know, Bradford pear, hey, it, it just is happening. Sometimes it'll happen. Um, a lot of times it'll happen too mm -hmm. is if we have a, a period of drought. Oh, where yes. it'll get rid of some of those leaves because mm -hmm. what happens, the, it's transpiration that happens out of the leaves. And transpiration is one of those horticultural jargon words mm -hmm. that make me sound <laughs> really <laughs> smart. <laughs> Think of it as plant sweat. <laughs> All right, yeah, like what we did goes, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was hot yesterday, like I was doing this morning. Oh, anyway, what happens is that the moisture leaves the leaves, okay, Spot. Soaks up the water from the ground, takes it out. And that sometimes when there's not enough water in the ground, it'll take some of those leaves and discard them so that it's not losing so much moisture. It's pretty clever, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is pretty smart. That's it. Unbelievable. That's it. <laughs> Intelligent design, I'm it telling is. you. Anybody have any questions, call Julio. Yeah, uh, anyway, and when you have to worry... It's not when your plant, the inside of your plant, is dropping leaves or needles or anything. It's when the outside does. When the tips of your plants are turning brown. When the when you have issues where especially like the whole plant itself turns one pigment. Like when you look at a plant, Julio, and you yeah. see that it, it, it could be a house plant. Mm -hmm. I can see it from I can see it from oh, yeah. a mile away. Oh, well, yeah. When a, a plant loses its luster and turns that like grayish green and is like flat paint rather than like a semi-gloss, mm -hmm. yeah. something's wrong. Yep. That it, it is dying. Yep. It is dying. Mm -hmm. When a plant all over, it doesn't turn, it doesn't turn yellow or it doesn't turn color in patches, but it's a whole plant yeah. changes color. Yeah. And it's an environmental thing. It's, it's, it mm -hmm. had at one time either not gotten watered when it should have been, right? Yeah. Overwatered. Overwatered too, yeah. All right. Did you know your plants can drown? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Get root rot. It, and what happens? Mm -hmm. It dies just, just like it does when it dries. <laughs> yeah. And that the plants need oxygen by around their roots. Yeah. And if you try to overcompensate, it's like, oh, wow, I did a really bad job, so let me add more water, water just yeah. like people with fertilizers. Let me add more fertilizer. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, that doesn't work that way. Um, adding more water oh. can suffocate the roots because the roots are are hurt and they're you all of a sudden give it you know five gallons of water and it's a you know one gallon plant and it's it then dry it, it's so wet it can't absorb can't enough mm. moisture to have aeration around the roots and it doesn't do well it doesn't do well and and that again you can tell when it's a, an actual serious problem when it's the entire pigment of the plant, and most importantly, the outward branches, the outward leaves, the outward uh, needles, depending on no matter what it is, are turning all one color. Yeah. Then that's a environmental, Excellent. usually watering issue. But when it's on the inside, it's not usually a big deal. Your tips are, are looking green and good. What, what about if I have like little brown like scorching on the, on the edges, edges of the leaf. Yeah, that's that means it's um, you need to water it. 
know. Yeah, and yeah. it's old. It's old it's damage. Old, yeah, it needs to be. Water. So at one time you missed the watering, but you made it back in time. But the plants still the leaves are a little damaged. Yeah, it's not too. bad. It's not too bad. It, yeah. It's it's gonna. It just it looks, looks ugly. Back. It looks ugly. Yeah, but it may grow into a beautiful mm. swan. Oh yes, huh? poetic. Huh? <laughs> yeah, really poetic. <laughs> anyway, oh, Mr. Poet. <laughs> That's me. Hey, you'll work on the comedy today. I'll work. I'll work on the poetry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, We're gonna work this out during our break and we'll be right uh, back right after this <laughs> hi this is len schroeder from bloomers in the garden do you have a landscape garden or plant question if so call or text us using the bloomers in the garden hotline dial 609-685-1880 that's 609-685-1880 don't be shy we want to hear from you Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. You want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomer's has a huge flock of feeders, birdhouses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hardy hibiscus have giant flowers on a plant that can grow up to six feet tall. That's pretty big. 
New varieties have kept the same size flower and on a compact plant. Highland, that's pretty awesome. It is awesome. And now don't get confused. Yep. I get it all the time. Do you have hibiscus? I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. Do you mean Rose of Sharon? Do you mean a tropical hibiscus? But we're talking hardy hibiscus. Hardy hibiscus are an actual herbaceous perennial that can grow in one year to that size plant. Julio, which is six feet. They can have like trunks, literally, that are inch to inch and a half thick. It's a, they're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. And they are just beautiful. And I've, mm-hmm. you know, we, we kind of, Proven Winners, it's like, uh, are we talking about them again? <laughs> <laughs> Proven Winners has some really, really, really yeah. nice, they're new varieties, only out within the last year or so. Um, it, I tell you what, it, it, it is, their, it's their Summerific series. Summerific. summerific. It's Summerific. Terrific. <laughs> uh, I think it's they, the, not only the plants good, their names are good too. Even uh-huh. Aaron picked that up. It's like, <laughs> yeah. wow, with Summerific cherry cheesecake? Oh, yeah, we like that. These are plants uh-huh. that are, let me give you some, some, some spotlights on what makes them good. Some have like a dark red burgundy foliage. And then they have this bright colored flower that's like dinner plate flower. And that it's on that has that background that just is tremendous. Some are a bicolor where where the uh, there's an I, um, or sometimes it's called a B uh, in the flower. And that where it's like a dark magenta in the center. And the rest of the flower is like a cray paper pink. They're stunning. Yeah, they are. They're stunning. They're and, cool. and that people, it's, every year it's like people oh. never saw them before. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't think there's any prettier flower oh. that's out there. And, and it looks tropical. It is not tropical. It's no. very hardy. And it will die, die back down to the ground to where you need to do some maintenance on it just to cut it back. Once it gets a, a hard frost, um, I would cut it back in, uh, let's see, probably that when you're doing the hydrangea cl- or your cleanup of your panicle type yeah. hydrangeas and your grasses, that's when I would cut back yeah. your hardy hibiscus. Uh, don't, don't do it too early. But I'll tell you, they, there are a lot of different varieties. Let's go through a few. Julio, tell me about Berry Awesome... Oh. Summerific, very awesome. Oh, this is a fruity and floriferous selection here. That means it smells, it has oh, a fragrance. Yes, it does. Yeah, pretty awesome. Huh? How many times do you get that on a <laughs> plant? Another bonus. Yep. Uh, they're they're, uh, they're going to be about eight to nine inches wide, the, uh, the uh, flowers, which is amazing. Moth lavender blossoms with a strawberry eye. Oh, boy. <laughs> Makes you want to eat it, huh? <laughs> Right. Attractively ruffled petals. That's different right there. Beginning in the mid midsummer, by the way. Yeah, uh, we're in this almost into that now. It's uh, bright green maple. Sh- they're maple shaped foliage, which is really right. So beautiful. the leaves are a little different than yeah. than the regular the ones. ones. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yep, and uh, so it's a round and mound uh, form, which is really awesome. And um, they're typically measures about four to five feet tall and wide. So it's a nice uh, nice size plant. I tell you that there there are a lot of there's a lot of work being done with these plants. So so Proven Winners, yes, has, has a gr- this series of the Summerific series is great. Like Granberry Crush mm. is, it used to be red, you know. Do you have yeah. any of the red ones? Do you have any of the red ones? And then it was white with white. a white eye. Yeah. Cranberry Crush is is a stunner where it's scarlet red. Mm. Um, and it's, the buds are like almost black before yeah. they begin to open up. And this is one where the the foliage, like, see, that was one of the downfall. The foliage on the old versions of hardy hibiscus were always kind of like off green. They were never like a really good green. Never. But these varieties paid attention to the foliage yeah. where this variety, Summerific Cranberry Crush, is that, again, scarlet red, and it has a dark green foliage. So the background of the foliage, and again, maple-shaped foliage. Mm-hmm. And it's the most compact. It only gets to be about three foot tall. That's and that's incredible. Because mm-hmm. if you're thinking about 
where to put them. Always it was like, you've got to put them in the back. We've got to put them in the back. This is the one that can go into the front border of your perennial garden, and it is a showstopper. Oh, yeah. It is absolutely a showstopper. Yeah. Got another one, Julio? Uh, let me see what else we got here. Uh, no, yeah, this is a beauty right here. It's called uh, Perfect Storm. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps the most dramatic member of the uh, series, Summer Storm is a flurry of stormy dark purple. Maple-shaped foliage again from the time it emerges in late spring. You could grow it for its amazing foliage alone, which is really amazing. And But as an added bonus, you'll be treated to summer pink. Which yep. You don't see too many of them, huh? Well, it's, it's you know, it's a soft pink. Mm-hmm. Like if you think of baby pink. Right. Um, I planted this at my fiance's house, Danielle's, oh, nice. and that uh, it is about to, to bloom. But the key is is that it has that dark-colored foliage. Oh, okay. It's not dark green, but it's a purpley foliage, and it has that same serrated leaf. And again, it's beautiful when it's not in flower just for the foliage. But the background, if you think of that purpley color and then with a bright, you know, or I'm sorry, it's not really a bright pink. It's like that baby Light. pink flower. And all of the all of the varieties of hardy hibiscus all seem to have an, an, an eye of some sort. But the flowers are gigantic. I'm eight to ten inches across. Mm-hmm. And again, it is a terrific plant. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think that, uh, again, it's, it's a good choice. Yeah, it is. It, the incredible thing is like Aaron, you were saying it, it never stops uh, flowering, <laughs> you know, it just keeps popping. Yeah. You know, yeah. it had and, so many buds. And this is one where it's kind of, you can't really say it flowers all summer no. because it doesn't necessarily flower all summer because it starts so late. So, um, but the buds are gigantic right now. Oh, They're yeah. ready to unfold. Um, yeah that uh, mm-hmm. Danielle actually had a 4th of July party. I was hoping they were going to be out, Not yet. you know, to, you know, show off a little bit. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> available at Bloomer's Home and Gardens? No. <laughs> You're going to do a little... Uh, uh, family gives you no respect. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh. <laughs> but again, don't be concerned about pruning them. Uh, you may have to do some supplemental watering, although they can take it pretty dry. Mm-hmm. If you've got um, a, a dry area where it gets like some sun where it doesn't need to have be in full intense sun it can't be in shade but it could be in you know where what is you know part shade you know it could be in part shade, part shade yeah. and part sun right. and full sun, full sun. Yeah, it's- so like it still needs like three hours of sun a day so if you've got okay. one of those you know areas where it's on the edge of shade right that's what that's you want one. that's what you want um feeding it helps uh, it's not going to make a great cut flower because the flowers themselves don't really last that long in a vase. But just look at them outside and just marvel because they are one of my favorite, if not the favorite, perennial just simply because its flowers look fake because they're so big. Yeah, they're incredible. That's, if you've got a question about any of your perennials, call that hotline. You know that number. Julio! Right. 609-685-1880. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. 
From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomer's Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomer's carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomer's experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. You going to do yoga with me? No. <laughs> no, no way. I'll tell you. <laughs> Yoga's healthy. Oh, it is? Yeah, anyway. Oh, right. <laughs> you're, uh, we're carrying on from our discussion during a break. We talk about everything. That's right. <laughs> anyway, Jim called. And Jim is a listener from northern New Jersey, and he is from Mount Arlington, not North Arlington. I got it this time, Jim. I got it. (laughs) And look, he asked a question about planting tomatoes and also pruning tomatoes. Well, let him tell it. Here's his call. Hi. My name is Jim D. Toronto, and I'm calling from uh, Mount Arlington, New Jersey. And what it is is uh, I want to know what's the latest I can plant tomatoes in the season, you know, I know a lot of people say before uh, Memorial Day, but uh, what's the latest I can plant tomatoes? I use a, a tomato called Celebrity. I like that tomato. Uh, that's number one. Number two is how do I trim my tomato plants? In other words, I got some uh, long leaves coming out, and I know that they're not going to produce any uh, tomatoes for sure. Uh, you know, I know enough not to cut off uh, flowers, you know. Can I cut my tomatoes way back? And would they produce more tomatoes? As I say, the long leaves that aren't going to produce any tomatoes, can I cut them off without hurting the plant? Thank you, and have a nice day. you got a great show. Very interesting. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for calling. Thanks, we appreciate it whenever you call. Uh we we were having a discussion like tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes potatoes, yeah. potatoes. Yeah. My fiance says tomatoes. tomatoes. Don't you dare say anything about it. <laughs> and <laughs> potatoes, and 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 it makes me smile every time I hear it. Um, is it a South Jersey thing, Julio? I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah okay. What do you mean you think so? You're from you're from a little farther south, yeah, but no. you're from Cuba. Cuba but yeah. we don't, we don't, you grew up here. Yeah, we don't have tomatoes over there. They don't have tomatoes in Cuba. <laughs> anyway, all right, Jim. Well, back, well, back to your call. Um, pruning tomatoes can help, but you've got to do it right. It, it's it's you know there are a few things which one it helps is that it helps with airflow and everything, but you've got to prune out the suckers that are within. Tomatoes. Now, if you can find plants, and if you look on YouTube, we have a four-inch plant that's probably about three foot tall. Let it go, Julio. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Oops. You pulled it out of its spot. <laughs> All right. That if you think of it as a crotch point where the main leaf connects to the stem, and there is a little Aaron, are you picking that up? Okay. Where you have a little bit uh, of growth coming out of that point. Those suckers you want to pull out. And when they're small, you can go ahead and and pinch them out. And you do this right now. Um, If you've had tomatoes in in the garden for a long time now, that your plants may be a little big. But like I'm pulling out a leaf right now where 
the growth on that sucker is almost four inches long. And you still pinch that out because that sucker is never, ever going to form a tomato. Mm. And, Jim, you're, you're growing celebrities. Celebrities take a while to, to grow. I wouldn't give up on them yet. You know, they're not going to, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they'll produce. Mm. But go ahead and pinch out all those suckers that you've got. Take those bottom leaves off. or If they're sprawling on the ground, maybe stake them. But make sure you're getting all those suckers and removing this, you know, removing them. There, there's a reason they're called suckers because you get fooled into thinking that they're going to produce something that they don't. Mm -hmm. So, but planting, if you can find plants like this, remove the bottom first two sections of leaves. And the, this plant is probably about three foot tall. And being that Bloomers takes care of its plants so well, it's beautiful green. It actually has some tomatoes on it. Tomatoes. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> but again, it can be planted, but you want to plant them deep. Mm. You can plant them right up to that second leaf, but remove it. And the idea is to make sure that you're getting good airflow so you don't have disease issues. You can, again, it, if, if you're getting too many leaves that aren't producing anything, take some of them out. Clean it up, prune it up, get air circulation through there. And, you know, that will help, you know, if you get rid of, like, those um, the lower leaves that aren't doing anything. Reveal the stem. Get air circulation all through it that it will – because it's wasting energy on producing leaves rather than producing fruit. And that's the whole idea of getting rid of the suckers. Right now, and again, it's early season type thing uh, that you're going to do. And, and I consider like June, July early for tomatoes because usually they're producing heavily at the end of July and in August and even into the fall. But again, if you prune it and you take a look at it, you know, maybe – once or twice a month, maybe, up until the time of harvest, that you'll have the plant concentrating and bearing fruit rather than leaves. Did that make sense, Julio? Yeah, it does. Yeah, did I say that right? Because it's hard to hear when I talk. Oh, no, I hear, I hear you cloud and clear. <laughs> I know what I'm thinking. Yeah, Sam, did you understand it? That knows nothing about yeah. tomatoes? Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's pretty do, clear. Do you have a garden? Uh, no. Well, I we don't know. You know, I don't have one, but my grandmother keeps one out back. Oh. I, I know your grandma. I like yeah. your grandma. She grows tomatoes. She grows okay. tomatoes? All yeah. right. So tell her, get the suckers out. Yeah. Well, well, I'll just say that no I won't say anything, yeah. Sam. There's a joke in there. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but again, stake your plants. If, if the air circulation is going around your plants, it's just better for them, keeps them healthy, mm -hmm. keeps them green. When you're on the ground, you have that chance of having issues with it being in uh, disease issues that transfer to the rest of the plant. So if you can or, or have the inclination, go ahead and uh, stake them. Um, again, pruning your tomatoes will promote vigorous growth and more fruit production. But just make sure that you're not getting rid of flowers, you know. And again, this is on uh, indeterminate tomatoes. And indeterminate tomatoes grow without stopping. They'll grow the entire year. Determinate do not need to be pruned. They get all their all their um, tomatoes all at once. And it's you know if you have a bush variety, they are determinate, and that means determined to be a specific size. Okay, a good hole. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you love it. All yeah. right, that's great. I have I have mine at home. My indeterminate ones. Yeah. Did you take them? Not yet. Are you gonna? Yes. Good. Yep. Good. Take out the suckers too. That's that's good. Mm -hmm. You don't want suckers around. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope that helps, Jim. If you can find good tomatoes, um, it may not be too close for you, but go to Richfield Farms in Clifton. They're around by. They're not. They're up in North Jersey where you are. Um, go to your local garden center. I'm sure that they have some tomatoes and that like us, we'd be happy to get rid of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, our tomatoes are getting a little, a little old for us to be taken care of. And it's not that they look bad. Yeah. It's just that they become a maintenance issue and they would rather be planted in the garden than sitting at the garden center. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 
609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. What's bugging you? Are your <laughs> tomatoes showing black scabs on the bottom of the fruit? Ew. Do your peppers have ulcers or lesions Ooh. on them? If so, you have blossom end rot. It's not a disease or an insect. It's a calcium deficiency. Oh, so no bug, no disease, no. no re- you can eat the. You can eat it. You just need to cut around it, mm-hmm. but you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> It just looks hideous. It does look bad. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it looks horrible. Mm. And it really disheartens a lot a lot of yeah. people that have their, their vegetable gardens, especially first-time vegetable oh, people, yeah. that they look, oh, I can never grow a garden. Mm-hmm. And, that, and it's funny because it attacks more than tomatoes, but it's known mostly on tomatoes. Mm. And that calcium deficiency, it's not, again, it's not a bug. I can remember seeing insects that would use that spot as an entry point to affect and eat the fruit, but it was not where it started. And it also, I mean, eggplant. It's on eggplant, too. It's on eggplant, but it's mostly known for tomatoes. So what do you got to do? You got to plant with bumper crop. (laughs) I mean, Master Nursery... Let's see, what bats are nursery bumper crop? Did they change the name like where it's got six names like the potting soil does? And it's master nursery bumper crop potting soil, gardener's, gardener's gold. gold. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> you want the original master nursery bumper right. crop. That has a lot of the elements in it that will help increase the calcium in your soil. But when you've got it and you can't really put get it into the soil, you can next year. So remember, mental note. When I till my garden, till in bumper crop, that what you're going to do is you're going to supplement it with 
a type of calcium. And again, it's also, Julio, one of the things that causes this is going to extremes. Real wet, real dry. Real wet, real dry. Real wet, real dry. And it exasperates the problem. So, Julio, what can I do to add calcium to my soil? Yeah, you can use a product that we love at, at our garden center. It's called Jonathan Green's Magical Plus, and that will uh, add magnesium, iron, and calcium into your soil. So what? And then what? It, no, calcium. Say that. Say that one more time. Magnesium, iron, and calcium. Mag, M- Magical. 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 Okay. What is this? Oh, this right here is a. If you're looking on bo- YouTube channel, yeah. YouTube channel, and and Jim. If you are listening to the show and you can go to the YouTube channel, the tomato that we have is a Celebrity Plus. It's the improved celebrity variety because I know you said you like celebrity. Yeah, celebrity yeah. Anyway, sorry, Julio. No problem. Yeah, this is a Bonite product that we have right here, and it's called Rot Stop, and it's a tomato uh, blossom end rot. Uh, it's ready to use. It helps correct a calcium deficiency. And uh, so you, uh, you can uh, apply this. It's a, it's a spray. And you're just going to spray it on the plant, right? And it and it's calcium, calcium. It's yeah. good for other things like like roses, like calcium. Mm-hmm. Um, again, and it cucumbers, peppers, um, in the eggplant, like we mentioned, Squash. all will yeah. will that will help uh, and be absorbed by those plants. It's pretty easy. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not. It's a major ugly looking problem. Yeah, it is. That's easily cured. So don't. Uh, you know, don't, don't panic. Yeah, don't panic. Take the fruit off that's affected and just trash it or cut around it and eat it. Eat it. Yeah, okay, but good. you got to cut it out, but you may not have much left depending, especially mm-hmm. on tomatoes. But on other plants, like on peppers and stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, you, there's, there's still a lot to use. But your next batch of harvest should be rot free. Yeah. Do that? Good. Put a little mulch around so you're not going through that battle of of moisture, like wet and dry, wet and dry, wet and dry. And again, Jonathan Green's Magical, it's actually a lawn product, but is perfect. And again, it's it's Magical, not as in magic, but as in mag, magnesium, I, iron, cal, calcium. So that's Jonathan Green Magical. Um, 35% available calcium. Wow. It's a big deal. Yes, it All right. Any other questions? No. Nope. Aaron doesn't have any. Sam? Yep. No, we're good. Sam's we're good. good. TJ, got any questions? He's good too. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 609- Six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. See me and Julio me and down. Julio wow. down. I'll tell you what. Lots to learn oh, today. A lot. Of, Can't lot wait push. for those hardy hibiscus to bloom. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I don't know. All right, next week we'll be here at the same time, and we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. See you in the garden.